Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game the video. Today we're taking a look at a red black splash white reanimator deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring three copies of Geth Thane of Contract, a three mana three four legendary creature. It does have a downside, giving other creatures we control minus one minus one, but for three mana we can tap and activate it to return a creature from our graveyard straight to the battlefield. And then if it would leave the battlefield, we have to exile it instead. Otherwise, we could just reanimate the same creature over and over again. So the goal in this deck is to, on turn two, hopefully, discard one of our expensive creatures with either a Thrill or a Bitter Union. Then turn three, we can play Geth. And then turn four, we can already activate to reanimate. Then we have some additional reanimation effects, including four copies of Shieldred's Restoration, which can also reanimate a creature on turn four. And then the downside here is that we lose life equal to that creature's mana value, which can also quickly add up. But in the late game, we can also kick it for two and a white, so seven mana total to reanimate a creature. And in that case, we gain life equal to its mana value instead of losing any life. So that's the reason why we have a few white lands in our mana base with four copies of Shattered Sanctum. And then we have an 8th reanimation effect with the Cruelty of Gix, which on the final chapter can return a creature from any graveyard onto the battlefield under our control. And we can read head to chapter 3 right away, or we can get some more value from the first chapters, making the opponent discard a creature or planeswalker. And then on chapter 2 we can search any card in our deck at the cost of 3 life, so that can also maybe find a creature that we can then discard and eventually reanimate. And then which creatures are we trying to cheat into play? We've got four copies of the new Atraxa Grand Unifier, 7 mana, 7-7, seven, seven, with Flying, Vigilance, Death Touch, and Lifelink. And when Atraxa enters a battlefield, it can provide a lot of card advantage, as we get to reveal the top 10 cards of our library, and reveal one card of each card type, and put it into our hand. So card types include Land, Creature, Instant, Sorcery, even Planeswalker, Enchantment, and Artifact. So Atraxa will often reveal at least four or five cards to put into our hand. And then we have two copies of Titan of Industry, another staple reanimation target, which is great alongside our Reflection of Kiki Jiki, which can copy it to give us additional ETB effects, where we can destroy an artifact or enchantment, gain 5 life, make a 4 4 Rhino token, or put a shield counter somewhere to protect our creatures. And then finally, two copies of the Cityscape Leveler, which does count as an artifact, so we can often reveal it to Atraxa alongside an additional creature, which is pretty nice. And then it's an 8-8 Trampler. When we cast it, or whenever it attacks, it can destroy up to one target Null Land Permanent, and its controller generates a tapped Power Stone token. So we don't get to trigger the Leveler when we reanimate it, unless we can give it haste right away. So it does take a while to get going, but then it is quite powerful once it does, and we can also unearth it for 8 mana if it does get to the late game. So these are the creatures we're trying to bring back. We're not very often going to hard cast them, but it's not impossible even in the case of the off-color creatures, thanks to our treasure tokens that we can generate with our shaman tokens from Fable of the Mirror Breaker, which also functions as an important discard outlet with a second chapter. So in addition to the two mana discard outlets, we have four copies of Fable, as well as four copies of Liliana of the Veil, whose plus one ability makes each player discard a card, which we usually don't mind. And then the minus two gives us access to more removal, making the opponent sacrifice a creature. The ultimate can also be quite achievable. Separating the opponent's permanence into two piles and then they get to keep one of those two piles can be a fun mini game. And then I have a one-off copy of Path of Peril, which is another card that's worth splashing a bit of white for, as we can cast it with its cleave cost to just destroy all creatures for six mana, otherwise three mana to destroy all creatures with mana value two or less. And it's also maybe a one-off we can search up with our second chapter of Cruelty. And then we have some cheaper interaction with three copies of Cutdown, two copies of Go for the Throat, and two copies of the new Shieldred's Edict, which can make the opponent sacrifice a token, a non-token, or a Planeswalker, since our deck doesn't have a ton of answers to Planeswalkers otherwise. Then a Bitter Union can be a nice way to give our Reflection of Kiki Jiki haste as well, to maybe activate right away. Can also come up with Geth if we draw it late game, and then Thrill another cheap discard outlet to set up an early reanimation effect. And then the mana base, as we mentioned, has a little bit of white, and then mostly red-black dual lands, trying to have a consistent mana base to cast our early removal without having too many pain lands or tap lands, even though we could potentially include a few more off-color lands to try and hard cast our creatures more consistently. And then a Crucible can also be channeled to make 1-1s, one and Abandoned Mire can also get back a creature in addition to milling a few cards, and then just a lot of basic lands. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. 
hand is missing an expensive creature to discard, but once we find it, Liliana can put it in the graveyard, restoration, get it back. So it's worth a shot. Got a few draw effects as well to cycle through the deck. And at least an early cut down to make sure we don't get run over. Also makes it more likely we can set up an effective minus two. So our opponent's bent colors. And we'll start taking up Liliana. And then now cut down can probably go. And then Cruelty is a way to eventually search up a creature to put in a graveyard as well. Not sure what type of deck our opponent's playing. Okay, Destroy Evil can definitely hit some of our bombs and our Saga as well. Broker's Ascendancy, so maybe a Tokens deck. Okay, that's scary. Could also be a Planeswalker deck for all we know, trying to add extra loyalty. Probably keep plussing Liliana. Could plan to channel Crucible to make some 1-1s in case we need to protect Liliana to try and set up an ultimate. So it's possible we just get rid of Restoration and then hope that Cruelty can go the distance. And then Crucible can help set up an ultimate. And then we still have an extra land to cast Cruelty next turn. Okay, opponent's not getting any value from Ascendancy. Guess we'll make some 1-1s. And then... Play Cruelty. Starting from Chapter 1. Can maybe snipe a Planeswalker. Possible they have a Wandering Emperor that they're gonna flash in. Yep. And Renan 7 versus Shana. So Shana is not going to gain any life here right away. Probably take Ren, even though they may not be able to cast it next turn. Seems a bit risky to count on it. And then Liliana will plus, setting up an ultimate for next turn. And then in the meantime, we'll have our cruelty taking up. And then the final chapter can get back something exciting. Ooh, Broker's Charm, destroying our cruelty. That takes care of our late game. That's a problem. Strike fast and strike hard. Another Liliana, I guess, isn't bad. Since we'll be able to get rid of the Samurai token. So let's say we put a white land, ascendancy, and emperor in one pile, three lands, a creature in another. Opponent's likely gonna keep three lands and a creature, and then we can get rid of the only creature with Liliana, leaving them with three lands, which can cast Shana, which we can try and then minus two again. So that gets us pretty far. Any chance your opponent takes the two pile here? I highly doubt it since it would lose three lands in the process. Alright, opponent actually kept the lands. Well, now Liliana plus make them discard Shanna, which I guess they were pretty far from casting. Can pressure Emperor, and then we'll have to try and ultimate another Liliana here. Although that one might be a little bit more challenging. Opponent found a land. Which is lucky for them. Goes to minus. That's fine. So, drawing Gopher to throw it a little awkward. But we can plus here. Drop it. They can minus one, make a Samurai. And then we'll hopefully draw something exciting. We did not. So Liliana has to minus two. So our opponent can make a Samurai every turn. And it's our opponent top decked. Two lands in a row, make that three. Wow. So they did not get punished whatsoever. So a Thrill Discard Leveler. Hope to find a reanimation effect soon. 
and minus two again. Sacrifices must be made. Close to unearthing or leveler here. Okay, so play Fable plus Liliana, and then it will likely fall to an attack. At least we made them discard a 5-drop that they couldn't cast. I guess it's worth jumping, then opponent makes another Samurai, we minus, get rid of one of them. Although with a land we can unearth leveler, although we don't want to unearth after attacking. So this seems fine. And a Celeste is the draw. Okay, can unearth now. So I'm not gonna discard. And that will take care of probably the ascendancy. And then we can just attack Emperor after using the minus two to make sure it dies. And then we'll be pretty much at parity. Opponent having a token, us having a reflection, and more mana to work with. And both still at 20 somehow. Okay, the only downside is that if we draw something like an Atraxa, we wouldn't be able to cast it. Same with Titan. So, what a game. The Power Stone can help with activating Celestis. And we'll hang on to Bitter Union. And then the final chapter can get back one of our creatures. Take four. So Reunion, Discard Swamp. And hope to find something exciting here. A Liliana and Atraxa, that works. So Liliana deals with the Samurai, hopefully. And then next turn we can discard Atraxa and hope to top deck a reanimation effect. <laughs> now I could attack with Reflection, could be bad if our opponent has another Emperor to minus two next turn. So I think we just keep Reflection back, our opponent's at 23, so I don't think four or even six damage is going to make a dent. Really need to make sure we completely take over here. Celestis is quite helpful in finding relevant cards. Scrap Gorger actually could have been Graveyard Hate, but it might be too slow. So our opponent's got two cards in hand. And a Teferi can untap Celestis and a land, or can go digging for some additional cards. At which point I'm probably going to have to attack with Reflection. And a wedding announcement. Okay, we'll immediately make a token, which they can jump with. Another Atraxa. Not the best draw. You won't be outsmarting me. So I could keep Reflection back to protect Liliana, but they're likely jumping here. Alright. So we're just a reanimation effect away from glory. And with Reunion we could even give Geth Haste if we draw it, to immediately activate. So our opponent goes digging. Untaps. So could see a 5 drop here. Tamio can keep Reflection locked down, that's kind of annoying. Or can minus to get back a Wandering Emperor even better, and then Exile Reflection. Okay, so we're in a bit of trouble now. Definitely need our reanimation effect to come soon. 
Nice, we're gonna just plus one on the reflection. You do not write this story. All right, there's Geth. I think that does it. So, play Geth, give it haste, and then activate getting back Atraxa. Although, sadly, Atraxa wouldn't have haste. And then found Titan, Land, Liliana, Restoration, and Edict. Which we can still cast, letting them sacrifice a Planeswalker. And then might as well keep plussing Liliana to keep that around. Opponent could then lock down Atraxa with Tamiyo to pressure Liliana, but uh, we'll be able to get back Titan of Industry and copy with Reflection if that's the case. Okay, minus five Tamiyo, get back Renan 7, which can make a relatively large tree folk. Although now Reflection is unlocked. Okay, take out Atraxa, exiling it in the process because of Geth, but we have another one. And I was probably going to go for Titan anyway. So I think that works out. Fight with the, wrong the extra token means double Liliana minus two is not quite as effective. But let's see here. Minus Liliana for starters. can cast a Kicked Restoration as well if we'd like, instead of activating Geth. Get Titan back, copy with Reflection. Titan's only a 6-6, unfortunately, because of Geth. What to do about that? I guess destroy the Festivity to shrink down the Tree Folk as well. And that should still be fine. So at that point, maybe we prefer Restoration. Gain some life back. And that way our Titan also doesn't get exiled if it dies. So shield counter on Fable and then destroy enchantments. And then we'll copy our Titan. And our opponent has seen enough, yeah. The Reflection plus Titan combo is a powerful one. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is missing both an expensive creature and a reanimation spell, but we can play a pretty fair mid-range game with Liliana, Reflection, and go for the throat, so I'll keep it. Opponent green-white. And then we want to start with Haunted Ridge in case we pick up a rat 2-drop so we don't have to take damage off our springs. Naturalist, an enchantment deck. Okay, happy to take that out. Keep the board clear, so Liliana minus 2 is also more effective. Companion's good against Liliana's minus two. So now I'm more into the idea of playing Fable. Jugan Defensive Temple can also make an extra token. Geth was an interesting draw. Since we don't have a creature to reanimate just yet, I think I still go for Fable. But uh, had we gone for turn two Thrill, turn three Geth, then that's a way to potentially reanimate turn four. But it also requires a creature in hand that you're happy to reanimate. Okay, so Liliana's not looking great here. Might just discard both. Alright, now we're talking. So, if I play Geth, make a treasure, then next turn I could possibly thrill discarding Atraxa and get her back. Or we could Thrill discard Atraxa now and then set up our Restoration instead. Although if we can save ourselves 7 damage, that might be better. So step 1, probably attack with our Shaman. If they double block, I also have the option of casting Go for the Throat. Could also just play another Fable. And then next turn, set up our Restoration. 
and get another Fable going in the meantime, which can never be a bad thing. In case they can answer Geth here. Sure. Opponent gets two plus one counters. And a Hallowed Haunting, that is scary. So we'd love to find a Titan of Industry to blow that up. Reign of Truth. We'll start applying quite a bit of pressure. So we'll take six. At least we still have a good attack with our Shamans. So a truck stack can go. And what else? Close to casting a Kicked Restoration here. If we attack with both. And then I probably don't need Geth anymore. Okay. So attack with our tokens. And then Atraxa is a good way to potentially find a Titan of Industry or Leveler to blow up the Hello Taunting. Okay, found Titan. And then another Restoration to bring it back. Path of Peril actually also not bad here. But I think the plan is going to be to discard Titan. Restoration to bring it back and Reflection to copy, which should take over. So that seems fine, and then we'll grab an untapped land and cut down as our instance. Okay, that looks good. To discard to hand size. Probably don't need Thrill as much anymore. Bitter Reunion has a bit more upside. And now a large flying lifelinker to make sure we don't die in the meantime. Cut down can take care of the remnants. Ooh, borrow time. That was a good top deck. Exile Atraxa, and now we're under quite a bit of pressure. So Titan's gonna have to do some heavy lifting here. Take nine. This turn we probably have to do some damage control. Kill the large spirits, kill remnants so we can attack, make more treasure. And then I can bitter reunion as well. And then next turn we'll be able to get back Titan to hopefully stabilize. And that might require a kick to restoration so we don't die. Okay, so step one, cut down. And go for the throats. Copy our shaman to make an extra treasure. Attack. And then I could also play Fable, but let's go for Reunion. Keep the extra treasure, discarding Titan. With the treasures we could have just hard cast Titan as well, which might have been better. But if we can cast a Restoration next turn, we should be able to decimate the opponent's board. Get back our Atraxa as well. Could also play Geth and then give it haste to potentially activate. So we have a lot of options. And we'll take the damage. Okay. So five, six, seven, eight mana. So I can play Titan, copy it once, blow up portraits, and then allow the shamans to attack. And then we can uh, copy Titan a second time. That seems good. And yeah, opponent has seen enough double reflection plus Titan. Kind of the bane of the existence of enchantment decks. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. This is an easy mulligan. This we can keep, and then 
Probably get rid of Cutdown, hope to pick up an expensive creature to discard with Thrill, although we'll still need a black source to cast Geth. So maybe actually keep Cutdown, get rid of Geth, and keep the Restoration as our reanimation effect of choice. And then we can cut down an early creature. If not, maybe discard it to Thrill. Okay, Adaptive is definitely scary enough to take out here. And Fable's excellent. So now I don't think we Thrill at all. Just wait for Fable. Blank Green into a Beast Caller. Edict could take care of it, but we should probably get Fable going. Another Beast Caller. Pretty good in multiples. They might keep it back to block our Shaman. And then I think a Thrill can go and possibly a land since we're somewhat likely to draw another one. Could also keep Thrill, get rid of Edict, and just work on our reanimation plan instead of controlling the board. But uh, Double Beast Caller is going to kill us very quickly if we don't answer them. Could go for Bitter Union Discard Restoration, try and hit our land drop still, and then cast the Edict. If we don't hit a land, we've got bigger problems. Okay. And then we'll pass it back. Okay, maybe work our way up towards a 7 mana restoration, although still missing a creature to reanimate. Reunion can also allow us to activate a reflection next turn already. And Oddity hits us for 8 total. Okay, there's our leveler. So, might be a change of plans here. We could activate Reunion to give Reflection haste, that way we can copy our Shaman, make two treasure, and then next turn, hard cast our leveler to try and stabilize. Would put us dead to another oddity, but that's probably a risk I'm willing to take, since the alternative is copy Shaman in their turn, double block, take out an oddity, great, but then we're still taking nine damage, and then we're very far from leveler, and if we restoration, we're just gonna lose too much life to it. So I think this gives us the best chance. And we'll need both treasures. Okay, hope to dodge another oddity. And then leveler could be a great way to stabilize. Spinoderm, another large creature, at least this one doesn't have haste. So attack with the Shaman to cast Leveler, and then we have Reflection and Leveler back versus two attackers. And hopefully that keeps us alive. Don't really see a great alternative. And then I should probably take out Oddity, which is somewhat close to giving the team Trample. Also don't want to kill Beast Caller and let them make an 8-8 Spinoderm. So, that to a Haste Creature or Removal. They may attack with both just to force a chump on Reflection, otherwise we can start copying Leveler to decimate the opponent's board. Beast Caller. Okay, that's fine. So they don't have an amazing attack. Opponent passes. So copy Leveler, attack with both, take out Beast Caller Adaptive. And then they have to chump one of the Levelers to survive. But if they chump with Beast Caller, they get to move five counters to Spinoderm, which next turn will gain Trample, and that's gonna kill us. So that's not quite gonna work. 
Yeah, this is kind of rough. If I stay back to copy leveler on defense, what happens? Although, never mind, we would still only have three blockers versus four attackers. So, yeah, I think we're in trouble. I guess we'll go for it and hope they don't see that this is lethal. Kill Adaptive, kill Beast Caller, since we don't want to kill Beast Caller and let them move the counters before blocks. Since then they could make a creature large enough to block profitably. If they jump with a Spinoderm instead of the Beast Caller, we actually could survive by playing Geth second main, so that's the hope. But nope, put on blocks with a Beast Caller, trample for one. But now they have a very deadly Spinoderm next turn, once it gains Trample. So that'll do it. Close game nonetheless. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is just missing an expensive creature to reanimate. Hopefully find it in our first turn or two here, so Thrill can set up an early uh, Geth to bring it back. Opponent on Monorad aggro. Okay. So we've got our work cut out for us, and... Uh, Thrill's probably going to discard a Restoration, don't need two of them. And then we can use Liliana as early removal too. Although Geth as a 3-4 blocker might still be the play. Another Kumano, so they didn't have a creature to play maybe. Or a 1-drop. Play with fire, okay. Guess we'll let them scry before casting Thrill, give them less information. Would love to find an Atraxa here to gain life, Titan as well. If not, play Geth. And then cut down, not bad. Can play it alongside Liliana to control the board a bit. And there's a Swiss Spear, which they must have drawn, otherwise we probably would have seen it last turn. And Anger. Okay, so that attacks past Geth nicely. And end the festivities. Okay. So that's 5 damage, can still block etching profitably. And then cut down deals with a Swiss Peer. And Liliana with the etching. Could also start plussing. Although next turn opponent will have 2 etchings. I think minus first is still fine, and then next turn start plussing. With the Possible they might be empty-handed by next turn, but we'll see. Okay, looks like they're gonna take out Geth. And then Liliana is also gonna die, Geth is exiled because of the etching, so then we wouldn't be able to bring it back. Okay, so now if we find an expensive creature we won't be able to discard it. Fable helps. And then I should probably hang on to both lands, even though I might be aiming for a kicked restoration to gain life back. If we get back a 7 drop, go down to 3, we're within range of another lightning strike. Shaman probably ends up trading, so we're not that close to a kicked restoration either. I think one land is still okay. Impulse is a good one, finds land lightning strike. So do they kill the shaman or offer the trade? Flame breather first. And then offer the trade. I think we have to take it. Another fable. So Restoration's not looking great, unless we can bring back a Titan and we're still at enough life, but with a Lightning Strike incoming next turn, that seems doubtful, unless they somehow go after our creature here. 
So might have to get rid of Restoration. And Alliance, play Fable. And there's Atraxa. Okay, so Fable, kill Flame Breather, and then we're not in a bad spot, I would say. Still at 10 life, probably gonna be 7. Unless they want to kill the Shaman. And then two Fables about to transform. Swiss Spear was a good top deck. So now they're probably more likely to just go upstairs, try and burn us out. I might need the Shaman to help hardcast Atraxa, although still probably more likely to discard it next turn. So now, if we find another Restoration, that's not going to be good enough since we don't have the life to spare to reanimate. Yeah, I think I take it down to 5. Discard Atraxa. Hope to find something useful. And then we can still Thrill. Finding another Fable. So I can attack. Play Fable number 3. And uh, probably keep Land in Hand to discard. Use the treasure. Even though we could build up treasure to hardcast some of our bombs. Just finding some cheap interaction might be good enough. Happy to double block the Swiss Spear. They take out Reflection. Leaving us with double Shaman at 4 life. Now we're definitely back in a spot where we can kick Restoration to gain life. And there's Atraxa. Reflection can chump if needed, hopefully it doesn't. And I guess we can just cast Atraxa now, never mind. Okay. So we've got a huge life linker at 4 life, so a single burn spell doesn't kill us. So should be able to take over now. Liliana, Crucible or Lance, Edict or Instance, and then maybe Reunion for Haste. More relevant than another Fable. Empath or Sorcery. Draw 6, not bad. So opponent needs Impulse into two burn spells, and they can't find it, and explodes. Incredibly close game against Moderat here, and we get to see our reanimation deck in action. Atraxa definitely seemed very impressive. Geth, not so much. Being a 3-mana creature to play early against an aggressive deck is kind of nice, as it blocks pretty well. But it is sort of sluggish to play and activate, it costs a lot of mana. So we're often just better off casting a sorcery to bring back a creature instead. So I'm not sure if we really need Geth for this reanimation deck to work. But Atraxa certainly is going to be a mainstay in these reanimation decks going forward. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.